Uh, can you also let us know how, what are your primary sources for, for collecting information regarding Tan Shui? My two primary sources were firstly a, a number of defectors uh, from the Burma army who over the years have, uh, have left Burma uh, and uh, all of whom knew Tan Shui at different stages in his life. So I interviewed some people who are living in exile who had been in uh, military training with him way back in the, the 1950s. Um, and then I interviewed uh, a person who served as uh, one of his doctors uh, when he was the Southwest Regional Commander. Uh, and I interviewed uh, people who've known him more recently since, since he became the Senior General. Uh, and then in addition to the uh, defectors, uh, I've interviewed uh, quite a number of international diplomats, uh, British, American, uh, Australian, Japanese uh, and Thai uh, diplomats. Uh, former ambassadors, uh, including the, the former British ambassador Mark Canning, yes. uh, former Australian ambassadors, um, the former Thai ambassadors. Uh, and, and that was good because I, I wasn't just hearing the Western perspective yes. from British or Americans, I was hearing yes. Japanese and Thai uh, perspectives as well. Uh, and, and also former UN officials, the, yes. uh, the former UN Special Envoy Rosali Ismail, uh, the former Special Rapporteurs uh, Yozo Yokota and uh, um, Professor Pinheiro. Uh, so uh, those were all my primary sources. Those are all people that have met Tan Shui at different times. Uh, and then um, I had obviously quite a lot of secondary material as well. Tan Shui seems to be really poor in diplomatic relationship and all. Do you have any idea how he's dealing with all these foreign diplomats? As we know, recently he visited to Sri Lanka and it seems to me like it's one of, you know, uh, the first time in a very long time and he doesn't seem, I mean, he came to India uh, in, 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 but, but that, this seems to be one of the, you know, the rare visits that he's paying to foreign countries. Mm -hmm. I, it's true that it's a very rare visit and it was quite a surprising visit because yes. uh, most of his foreign visits in the past have been limited to right. China, India, yeah. Singapore and uh, a few other Southeast Asian countries. But uh, it, was, uh, it was interesting that he should go to Sri Lanka. And I, my suspicion is he went to Sri Lanka primarily to learn about how the Sri Lankan government have dealt with the Tamil Tigers uh, and to see if there are lessons to be learned from that. But in terms of his, his general foreign relations, I think it's important not to underestimate Tan Shui. You know, many of us think that Tan Shui is stupid and yes. uneducated and, and boring. And to a certain degree, he, he, he can be stupid and, and uh, uh, not very interesting. But many of the diplomats that I've met have said that actually uh, he's, he's, he can be much more charming than we realise. And when he meets foreign diplomats, if he wants to be charming, he, he can be. Um, and also that his level of English is much, much better than we realise. He, he can actually understand uh, most, you know, well, certainly quite a lot, and he can speak uh, in English. Uh, so I think he is uh, he's more intelligent and more educated than perhaps we, we think, although his education has not been formal education, yes. he, he never went to university. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, talk about his education, uh, how much does, uh, uh, how, what, what, till what level did he uh, study? Yeah. Well, we believe he, he uh, uh, completed high school, but uh, he didn't go to university, he, yeah. he finished high school and he joined the postal service, yes. Yes. Uh, similar to Ne Win, who was also yes. in the post service. And he, he worked for a short time as a, as a postal clerk, yes. uh, and then he joined the military, and, uh, and he did the, 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 the military training. Yes. In the military, I, like, as we understand generally that he, he is a specialist in psychological warfare, uh, do you think he does use his psychological warfare ta tactics in, in, in trying to manage, you know, the, the, in trying to run the, the regime? I think he does. Uh, I think probably the, uh, the, the the most obvious example of that is the divide and rule strategy, yes. which he's actually used very successfully uh, throughout the country in, in many ways uh, with the different ethnic groups, uh, with the, uh, for example, in 1995, the, the split of the DKBA from the, the KNU. Uh, uh, again, more recently, the split of, uh, of, of another faction of the KNU uh, is splitting away, uh, and, and in other, other parts of the country as well. So I think definitely in t terms of divide and rule, also, in terms of propaganda, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think he's, uh, he's drawn heavily on, uh, on psychological warfare.
yes. Until until 2004, until uh, uh, the former Prime Minister Kenyon was barged, uh, there was a lot of you know speculations that the, the military regime is uh, literally run by Tan Shui or I mean sorry Kenyon and he's he's the mastermind in in dealing with uh, a lot of issues and all. Uh, do you think uh, that is partly because uh, that is uh, one reason why Tan Shui dislike Kenyon or do you really think that uh, Kenyon was just uh, the showpiece and, and Tanshu was the mastermind behind? I think that, uh, I think we, we have in the past we've tended to overestimate the role of Kenyon mm -hmm. and underestimate the role yeah. of Tanshu. Mm -hmm. I think in reality Tanshu was always the number one. Mm -hmm. As soon as he became mm -hmm. the number one, yes. he, he, he was the number one. Uh, and I think Kenyon's influence was, was limited, yes, right. uh, and, and in some ways uh, that was one of the frustrations uh, I think Kenyon wanted to, uh, to do more. Uh, and I think Kenyon's uh, fall mm -hmm. uh, came because uh, Tanshui tolerated him yes. up to a point, mm -hmm. but then when he crossed the line and was going too far and was becoming, was becoming too much of a yes, threat, right. yes. then Tanshui said uh, that, that's enough and, uh, and got rid of him. Uh, uh, you know, yes, you know, the military, uh, the top level of the military generals, they seems to have a very tight security uh, 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 levels in their house and all, and and to to an extent that Tanshu is is really meeting. Uh, no, no, I mean, I mean, he's meeting only a very few people in one in a day. So how 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 tight is his security system in his home? His security is very, very tight, yes. uh, and particularly now that he's moved to Napador, yes. uh, I, I think he's, uh, you know, he's in his own uh, yes. bunker in Napador and, uh, and is surrounded by uh, people who uh, both provide him physical security, but also mm -hmm. uh, people who owe uh, allegiance to him, people that he has promoted and they, they are indebted to him. So he has that political security uh, by surrounding himself with loyalists. And, 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 and the generals also seems to be having like, you know, they just cannot meet Tan Shui uh, as they like. And, and who do you think among the generals could often visit and meet Tan Shui? Well, I think, uh, I think Mong E as the, the number two um, uh, certainly has, yeah. you know, has some access, even though they may not uh, like yeah. each other very much. Yeah. I, yeah. I think they, they obviously do have regular contact. Uh, and, and clearly, uh, Thura Shreyman and uh, Min Sui, uh, yes. as uh, his, two of his chosen prodigies, uh, I think have, have regular access to him. There's been recent you know, speculation, especially in the news media, especially the Burmese me me exam media, you know, saying that Nin Shui is uh, rising up and, and there seems to be speculating that Nin Shui is the likely, you know, you know, uh, uh, the likely person to take up that uh, country's place, unlike uh, there, are, there have been earlier speculation about Shui Man being replacing Tan Shui, and, and, and what do you say about that? And there, there seems to be a missing you know, link with, for, for Mong E. What about Mong E? Where, where did he stand? Well, I think in regard to Mong E, um, it, it, it's clear that uh, if, if Tan Shui were to, to die tomorrow, yes. I think Mong E would become the number one be, because of the hierarchy yes. in the SBDC. Right, yes. But if Tan Shui can, uh, can plan his mm -hmm. succession, uh, I think it's very clear that Tantre does not want Mong e to That's succeed right. him, so he and Mong e would retire together, mm -hmm. uh, and he would want either Shui Man or Min Shui uh, to succeed him. In terms of whether it's Shui Man or, or Min Shui, um, to me it's, it's still unclear. It was uh, until recently everyone was saying Shui yes. Man, yes. Uh, and when I wrote the book, uh, right. most people were saying Shui Man, although some people were saying that Min Shui is definitely uh, uh, a, a clear contender, um, but but still, people were saying Shui Man. As for the recent speculation about uh, the, the, the idea that it might be Min Shui, um, I, I think it's too early to tell. I, I uh, yes. and and the, one of the problems with the regime is that uh, rumours uh, spread, and actually sometimes rumours spread because um, that's the nature of, of Burma yes. today. Yes. But also, I think sometimes the regime deliberately spreads uh, rumours in order to cause confusion, uh, and uh, or they allow rumours to spread. Uh, and so, uh, uh, this rumour about Minsway, uh, I'll I can't comment yeah, until yeah, it happens. Yeah, yeah. Really.